Hello, hello. Welcome back to Let's Talk HP Lovecraft. If you've not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to do that now. All right, we are coming to the end of the Crawling Chaos and Others, the first of a two-volume set of ghost-written stories, collaborations, revisions, all done by, in some part, by H.P. Lovecraft. Today's story is a big one. It is The Mound, uh, written by Lovecraft, and um, to some extent by Zelia Bishop. Uh, it was written between 1929 and 1930, but it was not published in its full version, the full novella, not until 1989. Prior to that, but after his lifetime, it appeared in various forms, uh, abridged um, on an, at a number of different locations. Uh, the way these videos work, uh, if you're new to the channel, is that I do a bunch of, or uh, I do a short period of, <laughs> a, a synopsis rather, of the story and then um, just share a few thoughts and things about what it all means at the end. Where does it fit into the Lovecraft pantheon? Uh, so as for that synopsis, in 1928, a young man who is a researcher, an archaeologist, or archaeologist, anthropologist, if you will, um, interested in Native American folklore, visits Oklahoma to investigate a mysterious mound where a headless woman um, has been seen pacing back and forth by night for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, a long-lived Indian chief uh, tells him the tale and also takes a liking to him, and so want, wanting anything bad to befall him in his exploration uh, gives him a strange metal trinket or talisman to protect him. Uh, when the narrator goes to dig, uh, the talisman acts as sort of a magnetic device, and it reveals to him a, bur a buried cylinder <clears throat> of the same metal. That cylinder contains a manuscript written by a conquistador, explorer, a Spanish man named Zamacoma, um, who splits off from Coronado's main group in the 1500s and goes looking uh, for uh, a mysterious city of gold, and there are many city of gold legends throughout American mythology. <clears throat> the rest, the majority of the rest of this story is uh, our narrator retelling what he reads in this manuscript. Uh, the manuscript tells a tale of uh, Zamacoma being led by a Native American to a cave opening. He follows this deep underground and reveals a entire ecosystem, another world, a civilization. Um, uh, there, uh, the civilization he finds, we learned that it's human. Uh, it was brought to Earth um, long before the time of Atlantis and before Atlantis sunk into the sea uh, by Cthulhu. And uh, they've advanced over the over the eons, and they're in fact other worlds, deeper ones, darker worlds beneath theirs. Um, they teach him their ways, but for hi forbid him to leave. Eventually, he attempts to escape um, with the help of a woman who he met. Uh, the woman is captured. Um, she's beheaded. Uh, her corpse is re reanimated and doomed to walk back and forth, guarding the entrance to their underworld atop the mound for centuries to come. The narrator, uh, he does not know whether he believes the story or not, but the next morning after he's done reading this manuscript, uh, he goes out, uh, he finds the pick and shovel that he'd been using the day before missing, uh, but he begins digging with his knife, and uh, before long, the ground at the top of the mound collapses, and he sinks into a, a chamber. Uh, and there he meets a headless Spaniard um, uh, pacing the tunnels um, in a a half materialized dematerialized form and he has an inscription written on his um on his chest scrawled into his chest saying how this is his punishment for having tried to escape and reveal the identity of the secret world to the outsiders um my synopsis doesn't even begin to do this story any kind of credits that would have been impossible to do really um um so i forgive me um it's a three and a half hour audiobook listen, so probably you could read the story in a little bit shorter time than that if you read as fast as I do. Uh, but it's a flawed, though wholly engrossing story, I would say. Um, I'm reminded quite a bit of Lovecraft's better tale, The Shadow Out of Time, which has this long flashback sequence where, um, where the narrator describes his experiences in this world of eons before... Um, uh, as he spends time dwelling and living in this past uh, with these earlier beings who dominated Earth. It very much reminds me of that, but it also has quite a bit, lot of, um, a lot in common with um, another great Lovecraft tale, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, um, which is, it's set in the Dreamlands, but within the Dreamlands, it's also primarily set in a subterranean world um, for, for 
big sections of it. I'm very much reminded of that as well. But the whole thing, of course, you know, echoes uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, stories like that. Um, even more recently, the, the whole Hollow Earth <laughs> theories of the Godzilla movies, I would say, as well, are sort of thrown into the mix. Um, it's... At its heart, I think... Um, it feels like this is a story that was inspired by, um, uh, I think Zelia Bishop wanted to do a story about these mysterious mounds that are found uh, throughout um, North America. And I, I like how it capitalizes that it sort of uses that as a launching point because there are, in fact, you know, mounds all around North America and we have know little about their purpose and who built them. Um, if I remember correctly, I remember hearing tales where... Um, Europeans came to North America and found, you know, found tribes living here, but then accounts from the tribes were that, yeah, those mounds were here when we got here. We don't know who built them, <laughs> you know. So it sort of um, adds a a layer to that mystery, sort of a um, a fantastic layer that I think is really interesting. It's it's quite like um, I always go back to Tolkien, and Tolkien wrote um, his Middle Earth stuff. Um, in part as sort of to be a, a mythic prehistory for his homeland, England, which he felt didn't have enough of its own mythology surviving that wasn't, in fact, just transplanted versions of other people's mythologies, primarily French. Um, so it, it, it very much feels like that, that um, you could call this as a, um, a fictional mythology of North America. And, and that really takes me back to the very beginning of the story, which I did not mentioned in the, um, the in the description uh, but in the opening paragraphs of the story um, they talk about how uh, people coming from Europe would often maybe look at America and say yeah this place is young there's no history here and of course now we're finding more and more as archaeology improves that uh, the history of peoples in North America is a much um, longer story than we previously thought with a lot of great chapters and no longer I think will we exclusively look to the Middle East and Europe as being the sort of the bastions of human uh, history and mythology and uh, the only place where um, worthwhile archaeology takes place. So it's all of that wrapped into a, a fun Lovecraftian form replete with um, lists of various gods from the pantheon of his, of, of his creations, um, which all sort of ties it all into the whole Cthulhu mythos. And I think that's... As far as the, the Cthulhu mythos stories go, the ones written by Lovecraft, uh, this is a pretty good one, just that it's the amount of depth and um, different names and locations that are added to the whole thing through this story. And it's a lesser known story, I would say. Um, better known than a lot of the stories in these two volumes, but still probably lesser known among Lovecraft stories because it's not accounted as one of his, his creations in that it was a co-creation. Um, though he did most of the writing, it sounds like. Um, so it, it maybe hasn't gotten all the respect that it should, not this amount of respect that you'd get from, say, a At the Mountains of Madness and other tales. So there you have it, guys. Um, that is the last, yeah, the final story in um, uh, in this first of two volumes. Um, We'll be moving on to the second one soon, Medusa's Coil and others, so I hope that you will stick around for that. In the meantime, uh, this one is going back on the bookshelf, and maybe we'll haul out that book of uh, Lovecraft poetry uh, again here shortly as well. So, all right, uh, thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe. Until next time, keep it creepy.